I didn't know if it was a boy or a girl to begin with. And he had just come into the city. And uh, he got up and he sang in this weird, weird voice. And people thought he was very strange and he played the harmonica. Anyway, we became great pals. We swore to his girlfriend's mother's house. He was going with a girl named Susie Rotolo. And I was kind of going out with her sister, Carla. But Mother Rotolo used to put on these fabulous big spaghetti dinners. We'd go over there and we'd get, we'd get fed something different from the beers and hamburgers of the White Horse. Now, one of the police can't find out how the gang is transporting the stuff. They're using milk trucks. And she'd even have a glass of red wine for us. And we thought this was really living. And then we'd all get a notion and we'd take off over to... Uh, Where are you going? To uh, Folk City, or we'd go over to see Art Lugoff at the village gate. Yeah, massive, gigantic place, uh, down below street level, and uh, Thelonious Monk would be playing. Square. That was about 1961 or 62, I'd say. Um, we had to go down to police headquarters in Lower Manhattan, be photographed and fingerprinted as criminals just because we were going to play the nightclub. Cops were bastards. They were uh, they were all crooked crooks, as far as I was concerned. You know, they were uh, bastards. People who. Um, People who weren't quite agree, shall we say, with the authorities of the city, which, as I say, was in Lower Manhattan at the time, would come up to this place. And uh, from time immemorial, it was always a place to escape to from hierarchies and, you know, from authorities.
was, the concerts were incidental to the party that was happening. And it was night after night, it was just a, a feeling of excitement, a feeling of liberation. <laughs> it was all spanking new, it was just extraordinary. The jazz people, uh, they were out of fashion at the time. 